Hello and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So today I'm going to do a continuation of my last video, which is how to use a jelly plate and to print on a jelly plate. So this is the second layer and we want to add additional items to our first layer of paint. You want to make sure that you let this dry for 24 hours before you get started on your second layer. So I have basically divided my prints into three categories. One are prints that I like just as they are. I'm not actually going to make any changes to them. So this is this particular pile that I have some white space but again mostly the prints have some interesting color, they have some interesting texture and I don't really feel the need to add a lot more to them. I feel like by themselves they they are strong enough and as I'm trying to add more white space into some of my art this actually allows me to do so and then with this black print I believe the black is such a nice contrast I don't want to change anything. But I do have two other categories of prints that I do, am going to try to improve on. So for this pile, I would consider this the ones that were part of the first print. So that this is when the jelly plate had the most paint on them. They are a lot more solid. They are a lot more subtle in texture and design. And these will be a nice place to start for adding additional texture and color to. So this is, the, this is one of the piles that I will be working with. And the other pile is basically what I would consider the second print. So these ones came out a little bit lighter. They came out a, a little bit uh, paler and they have lots of white space. So it's a great place to start adding again more additional color and content to. And you'll notice in some of the shapes that, for example, one of the ones I decided that I wanted to keep just as is was the first print. And then this is the second print. So depending on how your prints turn out, you may want to add to them, you may want to just leave them as is. So this, this is really a personal preference and a personal choice. These ones with the big white space, I particularly did them this way so that I could add additional texture. So let's get started on how to add a second print. So these ones that are more solid are good candidates for adding extra, extra images too. And this is something that I would not necessarily use something subtle like a stamp, but I'm going to use stencils and I'm going to actually put, put the images down. So for example, this one, this particular stencil has a lot of space in it. So this is a particularly good candidate for adding jelly printing through it because you're going to end up with some really interesting spaces and then that's going to allow the colors underneath to show up as well as add more interest. So I'm going to get started on that. So because this sheet is mostly red and pink, I'm going to go for colors that contrast. So in this case, I'm going to go for some of the cooler colors, uh, the blues, a little, maybe a little bit of titanium buff in there just to add a little bit of interest. Uh, the other thing you want to do with this is make sure you don't put too, the paint too heavy on the second layer. It's hard sometimes to always manage to keep the layers thin on the second layer, but it's something to definitely shoot for. It's going to allow some of that color underneath to also come through. So instead of being a really heavy layer, it's going to allow you to be able to have a little bit more subtlety in these prints. And another way to add, to make this a little bit thinner, is by adding some retarder. I would not necessarily add any water to your paint. Uh, you do, you, it needs to be thinner, but at the same time, you don't necessarily want to water it down. So that's why I'm using retarder on it because retarder is meant to basically increase your working time and it'll kind of just help extend the paint a little bit. So as you can see, it's definitely not as, as thick on the jelly plate. And in this case, I actually do want to maybe add a little bit more paint than what I do have. Just to make sure this thing is fully covered, because especially with some of the techniques that I'm trying to do, I, I don't want it to be so, so thin that you kind of miss out on the image that you're trying to add. So there's some light blue and gold. And this is one of my newer stencils, which I think is really quite fabulous. So we're going to add it on to the image, onto the jelly plate, actually. And you take your red print, 
And again, because this is through stencil, you want to make sure that you do not move it as you try to get the paint to go through. You may want to hold it down, give it some, some good presses, and see what you get. So there you go. Then now that is where you can really use those more solid backgrounds to add some really interesting color. I'm going to choose a print that's already fairly dark. This one doesn't have a lot going on it actually. So this might be actually a really great one to add this onto it because again, it's, it's going to add a little bit more coverage where some of these other prints, you're not going to want as much coverage because you already, you want more of the image to show up below. And there you go. You get the more texture, but you still get those little bits of purple underneath. So again, this is where you need to be really aware of how much paint you're putting on your on your jelly plate because sometimes you get two prints, sometimes you get three, sometimes things slide around, sometimes they don't. So it's really important to be aware just so that you end up with what you're looking for instead of something that you're not really happy with. And I think that was the hardest thing when I was learning how to, to print originally was that a lot of it is these sped up videos that show you like, oh, look how easy it is. And I'm going, well, it's not that easy. It, it, it does take a little bit of finesse. It takes a little bit of, of practice to actually get really good at this. And, um, I think it's totally worth the time, but it's not always the easiest thing. So I think it's being really aware of that so that when you are working in these, in these mediums that are maybe not quite as easy to work in, that you are aware of what it can and cannot do for you instead of just assuming that you're doing something wrong. Uh, I actually took a class with a professional artist who was, who was doing a mixed media class and she actually um, was the one who really helped me through some of these issues I was having with jelly printing. She had really great technique and she kind of explained where the, how the plate can work really well for you. And, and that for me was kind of the aha moment when it came to jelly printing. Cause I had done videos online. I had looked on things online and they weren't really helping me enough. And because of that, I actually had jelly plate that for probably a year or two, I didn't use at all. And now that I have figured this out, I, it's probably one of the techniques I go to most of the time. Well, I've been enjoying going with the stencils. And I'm going to choose this one. This one already has some of the swirls. So I'm going to see by having the negative swirls, the negative space of these swirls, because I'm going to leave these on to see what that's going to do to this print. And a good thing to do is when you're working with these is line them up at the bottom of your jelly plate. And that way, when you print, you're always being a little bit more consistent that you're covering the same amount of area every single time you're doing a print. Some I worked, some I didn't, but again, because I don't, it's a second layer. I don't mind that some of the stuff came through properly and some of it didn't come through quite as well. Again, you embrace what it is. Don't have too much expectation about what your final print is going to look like. And this already has some purple, red, and, and titanium buff in there. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the red and see if that works. Those colors jive well or not. Again, not every print has to be like really incredible. The funny thing is some of these ones that I considered more of my least favorite ones have been the best for sometimes doing collage and other things where maybe you don't want nearly as bright colors or you are looking for a slightly different look. It's good to go back and look at some of your prints and decide kind of where you want to go with the, with the next, the next color, the next print just so that you're aware of, of where you're trying to go with this. And we're going a bit heavier with the paint again. I tend to be a little heavy handed and it can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing depending on the day. So it's something to be aware of when uh, you are doing the second print. Sometimes what I've even done is uh, I'll take the, the first print uh, just on a plain piece of paper. And then the second print is the one I actually um, use on my second layer. But in this case, 
I'm going to use my bubble wrap again. And then I'm going to run one of my tools through it. Make sure that you hold one edge really firm when you are spreading on the first layer. Because again, sometimes you get that little bit of slip. It's not a bad thing. It means you have a lot of paint, which is great for getting two prints, but you, it does mean you need to be careful that you do not end up marring your image. So that ended up really interesting. Because again, you have those reds coming through underneath, but you have the bubble wrap patterns, and then you see all, the, all that coming through as well. So for a print like this that already I think has a lot of interesting things going on and you maybe just want a little bit more paint on, this is where something like this can work really, really well. Because you've actually removed most of the, the paint on the first print. And there you go, it adds a little bit of blue, adds a little bit of contrast, but doesn't become overwhelming on the print. Uh, in this case, I am going to start using some more purples and blues. I have gone towards a lot of reds lately, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, I usually do a lot of red in my underpainting, which is what's nice about using these to do a collage on an underpainting. And if you're not aware of what underpainting is, it's basically uh, a lot of the times when I do acrylic painting, I will start with uh, a, either some jelly printing underneath or a, a color. So for example, when I if I think I want to do a cool painting, I often start with like a, a magenta or a red or something quite bright uh, as my ender painting. So that when, as I go on, not only does that add to the quality of the print or of the painting itself, it basically allows you to have spaces in your painting where maybe you didn't necessarily perfectly add paint everywhere. The nice thing is, is then those colors peek out underneath and they add a lot of dimension and interest to your paintings. I'm actually gonna be doing another video that will show you some of the uses I use for these jelly prints, just so that you're really aware of some of the possibilities of where you can go with this. So one thing you can do when you're trying to plan out where you wanna maybe uh, put your next image is look at, at something like this and go, okay, well, I have a lot of area in white, I want that white area to be covered, but maybe you don't wanna lose everything that's going on in here. So the other option is to start looking at a few of the pieces you have and make some decisions about, do you want areas to kind of come through? So by putting that there, I'm gonna probably save some of this image here. As well, if I put something in the bottom corner, that's also going to save that. So you need to think about when you're flipping it, where are those images going to be? So in this case, I know I want to have a piece at the top here and I want a piece in this corner here. So then back, back down here. That's gonna help me as I'm trying to figure out what parts I want to keep and what parts I don't. So I'm gonna flip that on over. Again, I may add a third uh, amount of jelly plate printing to this because I, I like it, but it's not necessarily my favorite. And so with this one, this one's already pretty bold on its own. So I am going to throw this over top and see if I can have it fall a little bit more to the background and not lose all those fun images I've created. So in that case, yeah, you don't lose all the circles, but it said you add some interest over top. I always like adding some metallics and stuff or some buff titanium to these. It does add a little bit of 
of interest to these prints as well. I'm going to add in some of my favorite patterns. The other thing you can do is if you have a bunch of these old embossing folders, like I used to do a lot of scrapbooking and card making, and you have embossing folders that you're not using, you can also use them on this as like a, as a texture. It's just you have to be aware that you are probably going to get some cut off. So again, you need to think about what you want to do for design. If you want to have them as squares kind of along your piece, then they, they can work really, really well. So again, you have that, that, that seam in there, but one thing I can do is I can either just leave the seam in and be okay with the seam. Or you can add some extra overlaps. It kind of depends on what you want to do. There's, there's really anything with texture can end up being a really great background for jelly printing. So make sure you wash that pretty quickly, otherwise you're going to end up with a bit of a, a long-term mess from that. In this case, I really like this, so I'm just going to go over it with uh, just a plain sheet of paper. Pick up some of the color. Yeah, I find that kind of fun. And that's something I'm just going to leave as is. I was going to change this one, but I think I like it as much just as it is. But maybe I will take the bottom portion and do a little section and see kind of how that looks. You also don't have to use the entire plate for some of this stuff. So again, it works okay. I think it does add some interest, but I do like this word. It's add, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to do this a little bit different. I'm going to add a little bit of the colors one by one. Sometimes I end up over mixing them, so I'm going to see if this helps me with that and prevents some of the blobs I was getting. Let's add a little bit of red along the bottom. So that's adding streaks now. I like this one as is, so I'm just going to again pull another print from it. There you go, you get those really fun star shapes. And now I'm going to pull the second print for this guy. which I really like that. So I hope that this is giving you some ideas of how you can add second layers to your jelly prints. So again, it really comes down to personal preference. If you like the original print, if you wanted to make more changes to the original print, so something to be really aware of as you print is that 
what is your final outcome and you need to be aware of just how thick your paint is take that first additional extra print off on a clean sheet if you're worried about how heavy the paint's going to be there's lots of ways to make sure that you get a really successful print and that you end up with something that you really like thank you for watching if you have enjoyed this video please like it subscribe to my channel and provide a comment below i hope that you have a great week and i will see you next time